Hello and welcome to the sixth part of the mystery, that chain reaction quilt. And this is the final part, so the mystery should be uh, resolved this time. And so hopefully all has been going well. And just to quickly recap over where we're at, um, we have previously made several things now. So we should have a little pile of these sort of blocks and we should have a pile of these sort of blocks. And we should have a pile of strips that we've numbered carefully. We put them together in lots of two last month. And we should have some cut strips left over from earlier cutting. And there's probably a few squares there. There should also be some cut strips of the background fabric left over from an earlier cutting. And we should have some spare numbers. And so we're not actually going to use these strips just yet. I'm just going to quickly run through with you the next stage. And we will need some of the numbers. And then this month we're going to be cutting before we do much else. There's a bit to cut because we're into the borders and things. So we've cut this month we're going to cut out from the background fabrics some squares and strips for our borders and it's all detailed in your pattern that you can download from gourmetquilter.com um, under mystery quilts so it'll be part six so it tells you all about this cutting so i'm just going to move those now because you've seen all those and you can do all that bit yourself and i'll just quickly show you in amongst your pattern you'll still have hopefully your reference guide to all your fabrics and our first step you'll have a page that looks something like this in amongst your pattern and our first stage is going to be to put these rows together and these are also numbered so that's why you still need some numbers and um, so I'll quickly lay one out as to how it's going to go so I'm just going to work on this bottom row at the moment and we're going to start off with because we've got our reference, we know which fabrics they are. These are the G fabrics. And the diagram shows you all this, but just a little quick example. There's that one, then that one. Then there's going to be one of these in there. Oops, Put that out, sorry. That one, that one, and that. And then we want one of these planar squares. And then we want some of these in there and then we want one of these so you can see how that's going to work together and just continuing on that same way on that that strip there and then there's actually five strips of those for you to do so I think you'll get the hang of it now so you can be doing all that while I'm busy doing all mine and um, and then, so then we, we've just got to sew all these up. We've got to continue on that row. There's one more block going in there um, with another strip in between. So that's how you're going to lay those out. And then you need to number those strips with your numbers accordingly on the sides there, just like we've done um, previously with these other strips here. So here I have got all my strips sewn together now. And I've num numbered the rows according to the, um, the, the numbers on the pattern here down the side. There was numbers for your rows as you've done previously. And I have now, I've done all of my five rows and I've stacked them in numerical order as far as possible. So I've got number three, number six, then number nine, then number 12, and then number 15 and I for me I've just find it's quite easy to stack them in a little pile and I'll show you shortly in a minute what we're going to do with them so I've got those there now when I was joining those rows up I was being very careful to watch my positioning of the colors according to this uh, code that we'd set up and um, it's quite important and you'll see very soon why that they be in in the correct order so I'll just pop those to one side now, previously we joined up this lot of strips in last month and we numbered them because we joined together one and two and four and five. So again, I've stacked them in numerical order. So then we've got seven and eight, 10 and 11, 12, uh, sorry, 13 and 14 and 16 and 17. 
So there's obviously gaps. So now we're going to put them together. So I'm just going to lay a few of them out now just so that you get the hang of what we're trying to do, although I'm probably sure you've worked that out already. So I'm just going to start here with my number one and two. Hopefully you can see this, you'll get the general idea I think. And then I'm going to lay number three next to it. And hopefully everything matches with the colours and things. And then I'm going to do four and five, which will go there. I'll just overlap that ever so slightly because I'm going to need the table. I might bring that one up a touch. So you can see that that's now starting to form a little bit of a chain reaction going on here. If you hadn't already worked that out, that's why I named it this quilt the chain reaction because they're all linking together like a chain. So then we've got number six. Then obviously we're going to go to number seven and eight. And that's going to come there. So we're forming these squares that are interlocking with the other colours. So hopefully yours are doing the same thing because otherwise we're in a little bit of strife. Then we're going to go to number nine. Now this is your middle row, number nine. And we're running out of space. So I might not keep going any further because I think you've probably got the general hang of it now. You just keep popping those numbers in in order and you're going to end up with this hopefully very nice linked together um, blocks so you should have one of these stars one in the middle there one in the middle at the bottom and the middle on the sides and these other ones are the shoe fly blocks coming through here so now when you've got to this stage you just need to now join those rows together so you're going to join row one and two to number three to number four and then five to six and then six to seven etc etc until you've got the top together so this is so exciting how are you going with your mystery i'm really pleased that mine has come together to this point everything seems to be working and so hopefully yours is too so here i've got my quilt top together without borders at this stage i thought i'd quickly just tell you how i work out for my borders. I like to cut my borders to length before I sew them on. Um, I know that some people like to just sew their borders on and then cut it off. For me I like to have it measured first. So the way to measure for your borders, traditionally would you would measure three times across your quilt. So with your tape measure you not not right along your edge of your fabric because that can be a little bit misleading. It could be just a little bit loose or something. So you'd measure in from the edge a few inches right the way across. You'd measure right the way across the middle from edge to edge and then you do a third measurement in from the other edge of the quilt there now and then because this quilt is square I would then turn it round and I would do the same thing and hopefully when I've measured three times across this quilt this way all those six measurements will all be very similar if they're wildly different we could have a little problem um, but if they are slightly different, you would then just take an average of that and that will be the length of the border that you're going to cut for the sides. Um, so I, I also like to work out what I think my border should be if my sewing is accurate, because I kind of like to be fairly accurate because I'm like that. And I know that these two strips here that we had joined together finishes a one inch strip, so that's two inches. I know that this was a six inch wide strip that we joined all the way along because these blocks were a six inch finished block so and these are two inches and this is six inches and these are two and six and two and six and two and six and two and added up all those twos and sixes it actually comes to 42 inches well because i've still got a raw edge here i've got a quarter of an inch seam allowance at each end so that's going to be 42 and a half inches and I would hope that my measurements, my three measurements, will average at 42 and a half inches or something close. You might be just having the slightly smaller seam allowance, so it might be 43 inches. You might have a very slightly bigger seam allowance, so it could end up at 42 inches. But it should be somewhere in that region. And uh, I've measured mine, and I'm happy at the 42 and a half inches. So then I'll just quickly show you how I'll cut my fabrics. Because it's 42 inches, but this is for two sides, we're just doing... Um, just decide which is a top and a bottom on a square quilt there really isn't a top and a bottom not this one anyway um, so I'm going to do the two sides first and then when we do the top and the bottom 
we're going to go right the way across um, that border that we're going to sew on first as well. So because it's 42 and a half inches, that's actually going to fit a regular width of my fabric. So I've got here two strips, one for each side of the quilt, and I've, I've uh, given them a quick press and I've folded them in half, and I'm going to lay the folded bit down on the end line of my cutting board. I love to use the measurements on my cutting board the, and the markings. It helps me keep things nice and straight. And because it was 42 and a half inches, and because I folded my fabrics in half, and I've got the fold from where I'm measuring, I can work out what half of that 42 and a half is, and it's 21 and a quarter. So I'm going to cut my pieces at 21 and a quarter inches. And I know I can do that because of the markings on my board and my ruler. And that because because that's longer than my board, I can't do it on the board. If I could get a tape measure out, it can be a little bit misleading. For me, this is the way that I like to do it. So I now have two strips that are 42 and a half inches long, and they're going to fit the side of my quilt quite nicely. So that's so I'm going to sew the two sides on one each side and I'll press them and then I need to do the other borders well because we've now added this on to the end it's not going to be 42 and a half inches anymore it's going to have the width of the border on it and that's a finished width of two inches each side so we had our 42 and a half inches plus two inches this side plus two inches the other side added up makes 46 and a half inches so we are going to need to join our fabric this time. The strip, the width of the fabric is not long enough. So I've already joined my strips up here. I've joined the three other strips that I had for this first border. I've joined together into one really long strip. And now I'm folding them over again, like I did with the other ones. And I'm going to cut half the distance because I've got my fold at the measuring start point. So I'm going to cut half the distance. So half of 46 and a half is 23 and a quarter this time so I didn't really want my join which I've got over here to be kind of right near the edge which it could be so I've just allowed a little bit extra of this fabric that will be cut off um, I don't think it matters too much to just cut a little bit away so I've got my fold at my measuring start point and I'm going to come across to 23 and a quarter because I need 46 and a half inches so 23 and a quarter is half of 46 and a half. I'm going to cut that there and I've now got my two borders ready for the top and the bottom that will go right across so when I've joined this on to here this one will come right the way across and that should fit. Now you may find because the edges of a quilt can be just a little bit wavy and misleading when you put your border on start off with popping a pin in the middle of your border and likewise a pin in the middle of your quilt side and pin it out from there. Now because we've done it this way you may find that there's just a little bit of easing to do to make it work but you'll find that in the long run if you make that the right size overall for your quilt you'll end up with a nice straight border it won't sort of go wonky on you it will kind of all pull itself together and sit in comfortably because quilts like to be comfortable. Um, so hopefully that will help you with your borders. The next borders continuing on will be much the same. I've got a little stripe for my next border and I've actually joined all five pieces in one really long length and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold it, um, measure it, fold it, cut it two at a time, the same as I've just done with these other fabrics and the same then continuing, continuing on with the other borders. So we've actually got um, one, two, three, four, five borders to put on. So this will be the, the grey is the first. Then I've got a stripe. Then I've got another one of the main background colour. Then I'm going to pop a red in my next border. And then there's a slightly wider strip for the outside border. Um, so I'll be doing all those in exactly the same way, just building out and out. Um, and then it'll be ready to do the basting and quilting and binding, but uh, we'll get to that, we'll get the borders on first. So I've finished my quilt, how exciting is that? The mystery is no longer a mystery. So I've got my quilt hanging, I've been photographing it, I photograph out on my uh, deck, which is 
been really helpful because I've got this nice big wall with good lighting. So here's my quilt, all finished. I've uh, gone ahead and put my borders on and uh, done the quilting and bound it. And I'm actually really thrilled with it. So I hope you're going to be as thrilled with yours. So for the quilting, I've just done a large meander all over the whole quilt. And there's lots of other possibilities. You may think of something you'd much rather do. For me, that was a good answer. Uh, and I've got my stripe in and my little red border and I've got that nice little stripe right around the edge which I'm really thrilled with. And then on the on the back of my quilt I've just got a nice soft grey backing which I'm really pleased with because again I love that little hint of that stripe if you happen to be looking at the quilt from the back. I'm not sure why you would but sometimes you do. Um, so that's my quilt. Thank you so much for coming through the mystery of the chain reaction quilt with me. It's just been a lot of fun for me and I hope it's been a lot of fun for you. So join me again in the future. I'll be doing some more mysteries. Thank you.